Turn the other cheek. We've heard this phrase in all sorts of different places. Jesus invites us to do just this, but he invites us to do it in a very certain kind of way. In Matthew chapter 5, Jesus says this in verse 38. You've heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. You've heard it said this. You've heard it said that when somebody does something to you, you should, you should do back to them exactly what they've done to you. This, this was an Old Testament philosophy. This was a, a Roman philosophy. This goes back to the Code of Hammurabi. This is, this is a, a long-standing tradition for these folks. In fact, if you, you flip over to Leviticus chapter 24, it, it says just as much. In Leviticus chapter 4, 20, uh, 24, verse 19, it says this, Anyone who maims another shall suffer the same injury in return. A fracture for a fracture, which is, like, that's pretty intense, right? Like, somebody breaks your leg, you break it back. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. The injury inflicted is the injury to be suffered. That's the way that many people lived. It's the way that many of us live, if we're honest. We may not go around punching people who punch us, but so often when, when people wrong us, we feel that we need to be vindicated in some way, and we need to wrong them back. Words for words, insults for insults, text messages for text messages. We feel like we have to respond in kind. So Jesus says, you've heard it said this. This is, this is a pretty low bar to be able to respond in the way that everyone else responds. To be able to do what's expected. Jesus says, this is, this is kind of a low bar. You've heard it said this. I want to invite you into a different way of living that might change you and it might change the whole relationship with that other person. You've heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist an evildoer. Don't, somebody who's, who's doing something wrong to you. Don't, don't, don't resist. That word resist there is really to respond, to react. Don't react to an evildoer. But instead, anyone who strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other also. Jesus isn't saying that, Jesus isn't saying that we should do nothing about abuse. That's not what Jesus is talking about. What, what Jesus is really responding to is the way that, that people view us. He's very specific about what he says Jesus says, look, you can, you can live in this way, you can respond in kind, but how many of us have ever felt better about getting even? We rarely feel better about getting even. We get somebody back, we don't feel better. Generally, vindication only leads to aggravation. We feel more aggravated, more frustrated. And, and in reality, we, we misperceive the way that something comes at us. Scientists have shown this, that if I hit my thumb with a hammer, I might register it at, at a five on the pain scale. But if McCade hits my thumb with a hammer, I'm going to feel it's like a nine or a ten. And I'm going to ensure that I hit his thumb just as hard. We don't perceive the world in exact evenness. And so Jesus says, look, don't, don't resist, don't respond in kind to somebody who does something to you that you don't like. Instead, turn the other cheek. If somebody strikes you on the right cheek, turn to them the left cheek also. And, and again, Jesus is incredibly specific about what he says. If, if somebody strikes you on the right cheek, especially in this culture, right hand was the dominant hand, and so for them to strike you on the right cheek, they would have to use the back of their hand, which is incredibly insulting. It's demeaning. This isn't about violence. This is about a definition of a person. They would either use their right hand or their left hand, and again, in this culture, the left hand was the unclean hand because it was the bathroom hand. And so either way, if they strike you on the right cheek, it, it, it's a statement of your value or at least the way that they perceive your value. It's not meant as an injury. It's not meant to hurt. It's meant to harm. You understand the difference there? Jesus says this, this person is making a value statement about you. 
Now, in this moment, most of us think there are two responses, right? In, in every kind of stimulus situation, there's, there's two responses. There's a, a fight or a flight. Most of us tend to one or the other. Jesus says, look, if you're in this moment and somebody strikes you, you're going to have one of two impulses. Either you're going to want to fight, you're going to want to step up, you're going to want to return in kind what just happened to you, or you're going to want to shrink. But Jesus provides a third way, a different way of living. Jesus says there, there's a way of living where you can stand your sacred ground and you can show how you perceive yourself and how God perceives you, even if that person doesn't perceive you in that way. You can turn the other cheek. You can show your sacred value, your sacred worth. Not by responding in kind, not by hitting back, not by talking back, not by saying back, not by typing back. For some of us, it's, it's like Jesus might say, if somebody says something on Facebook, just keep scrolling. You can do it. Instead, Jesus says, to know your value, to stand your ground, turn the other cheek. It's not fight or flight. It's a new way of living. It's a way that invites us to know that this is not the reality of who we are. When someone says something about us, when someone does something to us, this is not a statement of who we are. Only God defines who we are. They don't define that for us. The person doesn't tell us who we are, what our value is. Only God does. But this is a decision that we have to make in advance because in the moment when we're encountered with with someone who says something or does something that hurts, our natural impulse is to fight or to flight. Jesus says if we pre-decide, if we decide in advance, that we're going to do something different, that we're going to live a different way, that we're going to turn the other cheek. We have a better chance of doing the right thing in the right moment. Because as the philosopher Mike Tyson once said, we've all got a plan until we get punched in the mouth. In that moment, in that moment, we're invited to, to pre-decide, to have listened to the words of the teacher and to decide that it's not what they think about us, but what God thinks about us. It's not how their actions affect us. It's about how our reactions show what we think about who God is in our lives. When we get angry and defensive, we generally don't make the best decisions. We generally don't say the best responses. We generally don't react in the best ways. When we become defensive and angry, frustrated, we fight, we flight. Jesus says there's a way of living where we stand our sacred ground. And it has the potential to show exactly what we think of God, exactly how much we trust God in that very moment. 